Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. Turn up your mind. Thank you for the opportunity to testify before your committees again, this time in an open hearing. I testify today with significant regret, recognizing that my texts have created confusion and caused pain for people I love. Certain private messages of mine have provided ammunition for misguided attacks against the FBI, an institution that I love deeply and have served proudly for over 20 years. I'm eager to answer your questions, but let me first address those much-discussed texts. Like many people, I had and expressed personal political opinions during an extraordinary presidential election. Many contained expressions of concern for the security of our country, Opinions that were not always expressed in terms I'm proud of. But having worked in national security for two decades and proudly served in the U.S. Army, those opinions were expressed out of deep patriotism and an unyielding belief in our great American democracy. At times, my criticism was blunt, but despite how it's been characterized, it was not limited to one person or to one party. I criticized various countries and politicians, including Secretary Clinton, Senator Sanders, then-candidate Trump, and others. But let me be clear, unequivocally and under oath, not once in my 26 years of defending our nation did my personal opinions impact any official action I took. This is true for the Clinton email investigation, for the investigation into Russian interference, and for every other investigation I've worked on. It is not who I am, and it is not something I would ever do, period. Period, end of story, right? Hardly everybody, get your popcorn. Oh, this is really a barn burner. This is unbelievable, and it's still going on. So here's what I think we should do. I think this is Peter Strozak, or Struck, right? Uh, of Struck and Page fame, right? They were uh, having an affair, uh, they were texting each other all throughout, and both of them FBI agents, uh, all throughout uh, the 2016 election. Uh, they were on the Hillary Clinton email investigation, and subsequently when that ended, they were on the Russia investigation into the Trump campaign and the Russia hacking, the Russian interference, the Russian um, uh, 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 release of Hillary Clinton's. E I mean, you know, it's just unbelievable. It was all, you know. So, of course, what has to happen today is Struck must be made out to be such a partisan that his work on the Hillary Clinton email investigation uh, has to be shown as giving her a pass so that he could then swiftly move on to a probe into Donald Trump and his campaign. Except that who knew that Donald Trump's campaign would be helped by Russia? See, nobody did until Donald Trump started talking about Russia. If you can hear me, uh, I hope you can find the right. Uh, so this is so interesting that Strzok, who is a moderate uh, uh, Republican, uh, said he would have voted for John Kasich. Okay, that's his political persuasion. And a guy who obviously was texting about everybody in government, a guy who texted about Hillary Clinton, a guy who texted about Bernie Sanders, didn't like him, a guy who texted about Loretta Lynch, very, very upset with her, and the uh, Bill Clinton tarmac meeting because, you know, I mean, they were, it, it, all these things were compromising his ability to, uh, you know, do an investigation free of politics as a law enforcement official. So he's texting his girlfriend at the time, and he shouldn't have had a girlfriend because he's married. Lisa Page. And of course, because the Hillary Clinton email investigation was closed with no charges being brought against Hillary, 
And then a Russia investigation begins because the Australian intelligence agencies contact the American intelligence agencies with information that Russia is trying to sell to various Trump campaign aides and uh, campaign managers and uh, secu- uh, you know people on the national security team for the Trump campaign, like, oh, I don't know, Michael Flynn. They're trying to sell dirt on Hillary Clinton in exchange for helping uh, Donald Trump win this election and the meetings do take place, they start investigating the Russia, uh, the Russia effort to, uh, you know, uh, interfere in our election. Now, this man, Mr. Strzok, obviously knew what Russia was doing and knows what Russia was doing to this day. And this made him furious and a lot of things that trump was saying during the campaign campaign was making him furious and so the text messages don't stand alone in a vacuum the text messages must be looked at in context and what struck wants to talk about today is the context and what the republicans on the uh, government oversight committee here uh, on the judiciary committee here do not want him to do is to put these texts into context meaning when he texted uh, you know that donald trump is an idiot uh, or when donald trump is disgusting it's because donald trump had just trashed a gold star family Donald Trump had said things about John McCain not being a real war hero, and they're reacting to it while the campaign is unfolding in real time, knowing what's going on with Russia interfering in our election, and they never, ever leaked to the press. Neither Lisa Page nor Strzok leaks to the press what they had, what they knew, and what they knew could have derailed the Trump campaign. It could have... It could have prevented Donald Trump from being president, but they don't leak. They don't tell the media. They don't tell the press. They don't tell anybody. And the Republicans don't want this said. So let me uh, catch you up on what was said today, and I can show you what's been going on, and then we can dip in live because it's still uh, going on. But if you missed the beginning, this is uh, the second half of Strzok's opening statement where he says, look, this investigation into it's not a witch hunt. This is not a hoax. This is helping tear America apart, you freaks. I understand that my sworn testimony will not be enough for some people. After all, Americans are skeptical of anything coming out of Washington. But the fact is, after months of investigations, there's simply no evidence of bias in my professional actions. There is, however, One extraordinarily important piece of evidence supporting my integrity, the integrity of the FBI, and our lack of bias. In the summer of 2016, I was one of a handful of people who knew the details of Russian Russian election interference and its possible connections with members of the Trump campaign. This information had the potential to derail and quite possibly defeat Mr. Trump. But the thought of expressing that or exposing that information never crossed my mind. That's what FBI agents do every single day. And that's why I'm so proud of the Bureau. And I'm particularly proud of the work that I and many others did on the Clinton email investigation. Our charge was to investigate it competently, honestly, and independently. And that's exactly what happened. I'm also proud of our work on the Russian interference investigation. This is an investigation into a direct attack by a foreign adversary. And it is no less so simply because it was launched against our democratic process rather than against a military base. This is something that all Americans of all political persuasions should be alarmed by. In the summer of 2016, we had an urgent need to protect the integrity of an American presidential election from a hostile foreign power determined to weaken and divide the United States of America. This investigation is not politically motivated. It is not a witch hunt. It is not a hoax. I expect that during this hearing, I'll be asked about that ongoing investigation. Where the FBI has directed me not to answer, I will abide by the FBI's instructions. But let me be clear. This is not because I don't want to answer your questions. If I were permitted to answer, I would. 
and the answers would doubtless be disappointing to the questioners and undermine the conspiracy narrative being told about the Russia investigation. I understand we're living in a political era in which insults and insinuation often drown out honesty and integrity. But the honest truth is that Russian interference in our elections constitutes a grave attack on our democracy. Most disturbingly, it has been wildly successful, sowing discord in our nation and shaking faith in our institutions. I have the utmost respect for Congress's oversight role, but I strongly believe today's hearing is just another victory notch in Putin's belt and another milestone in our enemy's campaign to tear America apart. There you go. Uh, and so the Republicans are, uh, you know, like, so what? So we tear America apart. So we give Putin what he wants. President loves Putin. So why not give him what he wants? Why not continue to tear away? And, you know, the most important thing he said there is in the summer of 2016, I was one of a handful of people who knew the details of the Russian election interference and its possible connections with members of the Trump campaign. This information had the potential to derail and quite possibly defeat Mr. Trump. But the thought of expressing that or exposing that information never crossed my mind. I don't know if that's 100 percent true. I'm sure it crossed his mind, but he didn't. He didn't. And it would have actually been amazing if he had. Okay, here comes Trey Gowdy, the first questioner, out of the bullpen, okay? Here he goes, everybody. The man with the weirdest hair doozy I've ever seen in my life, Trey Gowdy. March of 2016, you wrote, God, Hillary should win 100 million to zero. And I'm assuming Hillary would be former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton? That's correct. All right. In March of 2016, weren't you investigating her for potential mishandling of classified information? We were. Had you interviewed her yet? Uh, no. Had you interviewed more than 30 other witnesses that wound up being interviewed? Uh, I would have to check the case file, but I'll take your representation. That's well, if she had said something incriminating in your interview that took place months later of her, of, of her would she have won 100 million to zero then? Uh, likely not, no. Well, then why wouldn't you wait <laughs> until the investigation wait for what, to was test? over before you have her the nominee? and winning a general election against an opponent that hadn't even been named yet. A hundred million to zero, Agent Strzok? That's how bad she should win? Mr. Gowdy, those personal expressions of my observing the political process of the presidential primaries had no bearing on my actions of any investigation to include the investigation of Secretary Clinton. You couldn't think of Or anybody else. Sir, you couldn't think may. of a single person that would not vote for Hillary Clinton for president? A hundred oh million to zero, Sir, Agent that was Strzok? So that was clearly hyperbole, uh, which I... Well, let's say it was hyperbole. Let's divide it by 10. How about we say it was hyperbolic and divide it by 10? 100 million divided by 10, I'm pretty sure it's 10 million. Zero divided by 10 is still zero. You couldn't think of a single solitary person that was going to vote for her for president before you interviewed her and while you were supposed to be investigating her. Congressman, clearly that's not the truth. Clearly, I could envision millions of Americans who are likely and did vote for then Kim. Well, you wrote it. My point, sir. Did you write point, it? Did you write that? I text? did write that, sir. Okay. Were you under duress? Political expression engaging in hyperbole. Oh, my God. When did you stop beating your wife, Mr. Strzok? When did you stop beating your wife, Agent Strzok? Okay. So they don't let him talk. Okay. And finally, Trey Gowdy has expelled all his hostilities towards Strzok in round one. And Strzok wants to answer these questions. And finally, he does. Mr. Chairman, may I respond to... Yes, you may. Yes, Mr. Gowdy. Uh, sir, I think it's important when you look at those texts that you understand the context in which they were made and the things that were going on across America. Mm -hmm. In terms of the text that we will stop it. You need to understand that that was written late at night, off the cuff, and it was in response to a series of events that included then-candidate Trump insulting the immigrant family of a fallen war hero. And my presumption, based on that horrible, disgusting behavior, that the American population would not elect somebody demonstrating that behavior to be president of the United States. It was in no way, unequivocally, any suggestion that me, the FBI, would take any action whatsoever to improperly impact 
the electoral process for any candidate. So I, I take great offense and I take great disagreement to your assertion of what that was or wasn't. As to the 100 million to one, that was clearly a statement made in jest and using hyperbole. I, of course, recognize that millions of Americans were likely to vote for candidate Trump. I acknowledge that is absolutely their right. That is what makes our democracy such a vibrant process that it is. But to suggest somehow that we can parse down the words of shorthand textual conversations like there's some contract for a car is, is simply not consistent with my or most people's use of text messaging. I can assure you, Mr. Chairman, at no time in any of these texts did those personal beliefs ever enter into the realm of any action I took. Furthermore, this isn't just me sitting here telling you, you don't have to take my word for it. At every step, at every investigative decision, there are multiple layers of people above me, the assistant director, executive assistant director, deputy director, and director of the FBI, and multiple layers of people below me, section chiefs, supervisors, unit chiefs, case agents, and analysts, all of whom were involved in all of these decisions. They would not tolerate any improper behavior in me any more than I would tolerate it in them. That is who we are as the FBI. And the suggestion that I, in some dark chamber somewhere in the FBI, would somehow cast aside all of these procedures, all of these safeguards, and somehow be able to do this is astounding to me. It simply couldn't happen. And the proposition that that is going on, that it might occur anywhere in the FBI, deeply corrodes what the FBI is in American society, the effectiveness of their mission, and it is deeply destructive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he, he's obviously saying, look, I had information that could have derailed Trump. I never told a single soul about it. I could never went to the press. I never told anybody. I'm texting in real time because I see him trashing Kaiser Khan's son who died in uh, in war and and he's he's saying uh, you know uh, 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 th 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 this man is uh, you know not to be trusted because he's a muslim i mean it was just a sick campaign as we all know and they're reacting to it in real time by texting each other late at night watching all this crap that we watched and in no way did it affect the investigation of uh, anybody and we know that because Strzok was a middle management guy. He had people above him as he uh, lists. He had people below him as he lists. He's somewhere in the middle uh, of this hierarchy in the FBI. He's an agent. He's doing, uh, you know, a, a, an investigation into email servers. And whether or not Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, should have been using Gmail. That was the, oh, my God. Oh, my God, that's the big, uh, you know, uh, national security breach that they tasked him with, uh, you know. And, of course, the answer is yeah, she shouldn't have. But uh, there's no crime here because there was no intent to defraud the United States. There was no intent to transfer classified information to an enemy or an adversary. But now he's on the Russia investigation. And, oh, my God, they are actually cooperating and colluding uh, the Russians, the oligarchs, they're going to meetings in Trump Tower. They're sending Natalia Vessel in the sky, who's working on the Prevazon case, which suddenly gets settled, uh, which was a, a big case about, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the defrauding of, of, of uh, 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 Bill Browder's company. I mean, you know, this goes all the way back to that. And then Bill Browder exposes this fraudulent transfer of funds to Vladimir Putin personally. His lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, exposes it and ends up being arrested himself, put in Putin's prison, and killed by Putin, who Trump loves. Very sick, right? And then it just, the whole thing descends into abject chaos. I want to ask you, in that first week, We'll go ahead and up it to eight days. Between July 31st and August 8th, how many interviews did you conduct related to the alleged collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? He's asking the lawyers. So, Congressman, as you know, counsel for the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, has instructed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. I'm asking for a number. Russian attempts to agent. interfere. Agent Strzok, I'm asking for a number. I haven't gotten to the names. How many people had you investigated, had you interviewed between the beginning of it on July 31st and August the 8th? It's an eight-day time period. 
we're a week into an investigation. How many people had you interviewed? Congressman, I understand your question. I appreciate it, and I would very much like to answer. But as I've stated, as you know that counsel of the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, have directed me not to answer any <coughs> questions about the ongoing investigation into Russian attempts to interfere. So, so you well, the, gentleman, the gentleman will election. suspend and the clock will suspend. Mr. Strzok, you are under subpoena and are required to answer the question. Are you objecting to the question? If so, please Mr. state your objection. Mr. Chairman, I object. The, the gentleman it does not have standing Mr. to Chair object. I, there is no point, point of order. No point of order well, here. The, the, the point of order it should be heard. General State is point of order. <laughs> Good luck. My point of order is that intentionally or otherwise, this demand puts Mr. Strzok in an impossible position. Yep. He is still an employee of the FBI, and FBI counsel has instructed the, him not to answer the question. The gentleman. If we have a problem with this policy, we should take it up with the FBI, mm -hmm. not badger Mr. Strzok. The but gentleman's should... point of order is not well taken. It's right the, on point. No, it's not. The Mr. Strzok. Are you objecting to the question? And if so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, two things. One, I do not believe I am here under subpoena. I believe I am here voluntarily. Second, I will not, based on direction of the FBI to me, based on that, I will not answer that question. Because it goes to matters which are related to the ongoing investigations. Ongoing being undertaken by the special Mr. counsel's Strzok, office. Mr. Strzok, you have not stated a l valid legal basis for not responding to a question he directed to so. you by a member of the United States House of Representatives. How could you chair and the Judiciary you are Committee? you overruled. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Thank You're, you, Gerald. Uh, let, me, let me continue. Your testimony is essential to this hearing and to our oversight and information gathering functions with regard to the actions taken mm. and decisions made by the Department of Justice He's and the reading. Federal Bureau of Investigation <laughs> in 2016 and 2017. I am specifically directing you to answer the question in response to our subpoena, notwithstanding your objection. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Strzok, please be advised that you can either comply with the committee's directive to answer the question or refuse to do so the latter of which will place you at risk of a contempt citation oh my and God. potential criminal liability. Point do, of do order. Do you understand that? Point of order, Mr. Chairman. The question is directed to the witness. And I have a point of order before he answers the question. The, the, the point of order is not well taken until... You don't know what the point of order is. You can't say it's not well <laughs> the, taken. The point of order, the, the, the witness will answer the question. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, have, I raise my point of order and I insist on it. What is the point of order? The United States Attorney's Manual instructs department personnel not to respond to questions about the existence of an ongoing investigation or comment on its nature or progress. In a letter to Congressman John Linder in 2000, referred to as the Linder letter, the department made this policy explicitly applicable to requests from Congress. Quote, although Congress has a clearly legitimate interest in determining how the department enforces statutes, congressional inquiries during the pendency of a matter pose an inherent threat to the integrity of the department's law enforcement and litigation functions, unquote. Therefore, the, chairman, the question being directed at the, at the witness is out of order. The witness's decl declination to answer it as against the instructions of the FBI pursuant to FBI policy, which is necessary so as not to allow us to subvert an ongoing criminal investigation, he is right. He is he right. He not answer the question. Right, he can't answer the question, and you're putting him in an impossible situation. You're saying to him, under threat of holding you in contempt and throwing you in jail and having criminal prosecution and everything, we need for you to comment on an ongoing investigation. Now, how many times in the last two years have we all learned over and over again that you never comment on an ongoing investigation that the FBI or special counsel or an independent counsel, although we don't have one anymore, uh, it, it, you can't. And they're, they're insisting, they're insisting that he answer a question that he has, and he's got counsel behind him. FBI counsel is sitting right behind him, and they're telling him uh, this, as, uh, this is uh, relevant to the ongoing investigation, which he is not a part of any longer, because when Mueller found out that he was texting like this, he took him off the Russia investigation fairly early on, okay? Fairly early on. Now, Strzok... Is, is 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 threatened by uh, Trey Gowdy, right? He's going to and Goodlatte, the chairman, 
who has to read it off a piece of paper. Okay, somebody, he doesn't know what a point of order is. He does, he's objecting to Gerald Nadler and he's, you know. But Goodlatte is going to threaten again. And Strzok is saying, I need to ask the attorney what to do here because you put me in an impossible situation. Will you answer the committee's question as directed or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? Mr. Chairman, as you know, counsel for the FBI has directed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. As you also know, counsel for the FBI is sitting here behind me. May I consult with them? You may consult with your own counsel. Not but I may not consult with the FBI's only, counsel? Only with your own counsel. Oh, my God. Mr. Chairman, there's no basis for that. He can consult <laughs> with the FBI counsel. He's an FBI the employee. The gentleman is not recognized. <laughs> and the chairman is not being proper. The chairman is being proper. The witness can't be directed not to confer with his attorney. He, <laughs> the, he, the FBI is not his attorney. His attorney is seated behind him. If he wishes He's an to employee of the attorney, FBI. Mr. He's already chairman. done. He may do so. And his attorney may consult with the FBI attorney? Oh, my God. How could this man be the head of the Judiciary Committee when he doesn't even know what the law is? He doesn't know what the rules are. Strzok is still employed by the FBI, and the FBI is protecting an investigation, and the FBI is protecting, uh, you know, uh, secrets and things that cannot be exposed during an ongoing investigation. And all this committee is looking to do is two things, and two things only, okay? It is a calculated political strategy to demonize Peter Strzok and all the men and women of the FBI and everybody in the Department of Justice in order to preemptively discredit the result of the Mueller investigation. That's number one. And number two, they would love to get inside baseball details about this investigation so they can tell Donald Trump what the FBI might have. So Donald Trump can then lie. This is such happy horse poo, okay? And he threatens him again. Mr. Chairman, my counsel has reiterated that counsel for the FBI has directed that I may not answer that question. Mm. Mr. Strzok, in a moment we will continue with the hearing, but based on your refusal to answer the question, at the conclusion of the day we will be recessing the hearing and you will be subject to recall to allow the committee to consider proceeding with a contempt citation. A point of order, Mr. Chairman. Will the committee also consider contempt for Mr. Bannon, who refused to answer Mr. Gowdy's questions? Yes. When he was actually under subpoena. Uh -huh. That, that is not too? a proper point of order in this hearing. Parliamentary inquiry. Mr. Gowdy, do you remember Parliamentary that? Parliamentary inquiry. The, the do you time remember that? is controlled by the gentleman from Parliamentary South. inquiry. A parliamentary inquiry is Mr. not an order when the gentleman it's from South order. Carolina controls the time. A parliamentary inquiry is always in order, meaning if, if you're threatening somebody with contempt and somebody wants to uh, make a parliamentary inquiry, they're asking, so what are the rules about holding somebody? You know, I, I'm, I'm asking, what are the rules? His lawyer, the FBI lawyer, just told him he's not free to answer. You're putting him in an impossible situation. Now you're threatening him with contempt. Now you're threatening him with, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, criminal uh, uh, charges. Seriously, dude. What the, what the F is he supposed to do? That's the parliament. And oh, no, we don't recognize. We don't. This was so freaking big. Okay. Let me take a break. Let me, let me do this. Uh, I'm going to take a break, and then we're going to come back. And uh, a, a representative uh, named John Ratcliffe, a Republican from Texas, questions struck honesty and integrity and, uh, you know, a series of uh, yes or no questions. I mean, this is so unbelievable. And just remember, as you're listening to this the whole time, I, know, I want you to keep in your head that Strzok knew the summer before we voted about the Russian interference, about the Trump campaign, about what Manafort was doing, about what uh, Flynn was doing with Kislyak, about what Sessions was doing. Sessions had to recuse, right? All these things, he knew about Carter Page, he knew about, um, I mean, he knew the whole Russia thing was going, and he never dropped a dime on Donald Trump, ever. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.